Welcome to the weekly service recording from Watton Methodist Church for Sunday, November the 1st, 2020. Today is All Saints Day. And in this service we have an opportunity to remember those we have loved as well as saints of the church and commit them once again into God's loving care. The Bible readings this week are Matthew 5, verses 1 to 12, read for us by Jenny Gillings, and Revelation 7, verses 9 to 17, read for us by Grace Rumsby. And this week's short message comes to us from our own minister, Reverend Jackie Horton. This reading is from Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. Jesus saw the crowds and went up a hill where he sat down. His disciples gathered round him, and he began to teach them. Happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are those who mourn. God will comfort them. Happy are those who are humble. They will receive what God has promised. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. God will satisfy them fully. Happy are those who are merciful to others. God will be merciful to them. Happy are the pure in heart. They will see God. Happy are those who work for peace. God will call them his children. Happy are those who are persecuted because they do what God requires. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are you when people insult you and persecute you and tell all kinds of evil lies against you because you are my followers. Be happy and glad, for a great reward is kept for you in heaven. This is how the prophets who lived before you were persecuted. We continue in worship with our first hymn, number 244 from Singing the Faith, Blessed are the pure in heart. And we're singing verse 1, verse 3 and verse 4. Give your own thanks to God for all the people that you love and for all those that care about you. Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 17. The great multitude in white robes. After this, I looked. And there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne 
and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Bearing in mind the words from Revelation are the record of John's extended vision given around two millennia ago. What do they say to you about heaven? About all the saints who from their labours rest. About your future after death. Are you encouraged or fearful? I have recently been reading a book by the spiritual writer called Margaret Sylph. The book's called Sacred Spaces. She describes looking out at a number of Scottish islands and likening them to people living and working in the same vicinity. So she's looking at the islands and seeing people. But, she says, if the sea were to be pumped away, it would be discovered that the islands would in fact be lumps and bumps on one bedrock. Of course, the bedrock lies below the ocean all the time. So the islands are in fact connected. Sylph then changes the metaphor and says that life is like a strand of a Celtic knot that weaves in and out of a Celtic design. Again, she wants to say that everything is connected. And she says this, Weaving can only happen when two or more strands come together. It is a symbol of community. It needs the warp and the weft. There is no such thing as a one-strand cloth. Nor, as our Celtic forebears knew instinctively, is there any such thing as a solitary life pilgrimage. Because we are all one in the bedrock. And the choices of each make a difference to all. Well, as a society, we have, uh, in our present time, rediscovered the truth of our interconnectedness through the coronavirus pandemic. We've discovered it in a good way as people have worked hard and self-sacrificed themselves to help others and the whole community. People have been more connected. But also we've discovered it in a bad way. We've discovered that we're all capable of passing the virus on. We know now that nobody can have it without the possibility of it being carried to someone else. 
Well, on All Saints Day and All Souls Day, we think about our interconnectedness. Our interconnectedness with the whole of the human race. Those who have gone before us, as well as those who are alive in the world now. People who are or have been close to us are separate strands in the Celtic knot. Separate strands but woven together with us. And even though people die, their strands live on. Even though they are no longer physically with us, they remain an essential part of who we are and who we have become through the interweaving of our life with theirs. To help you remember your loved ones, you may like to clear a space on a table and put a representation of a candle, or a real one if it's safe, in the centre. Be still for a moment and know that God is God and that the light of Christ shines constantly in the light and darkness of the world. Now, place representations of people who have died and whom you want to remember around the candle. It may simply be their names written on paper or you might like to use small objects to represent particular people, or you may perhaps want to use photographs. You may want to remember just one or two people, or many people. You may just want to remember family or loved ones on this occasion, or you may want to remember members of your church family, or from the circuit. Be quiet for a little while, and then say this prayer. Father of mercies, and God of all comfort, you embrace us with the arms of love. In the shadow of death, your light shines on us. We remember before you our brothers and sisters. May we, with them, inherit your eternal kingdom and rest with you in light and peace. Amen. Our second hymn is For Those We've Loved and it was written by our own minister and circuit superintendent, Reverend Jackie Horton. And we're using the tune of For All the Saints that's number 745 in Singing the Faith, and there are four verses.
come before God in prayer. We pray for all those who have been bereaved recently, thinking of those we know ourselves. We give thanks again for those in our churches who have left us recently and commend them to God's peace. We pray for our world, our country, the Methodist Church, our circuit, our local church and fellowship in Watton, our community, our family and friends, and ourselves. We think of ongoing and important world and national issues, climate change, the pandemic, the election in the United States, increasing poverty in our own country, and the issue of free school meals. Amen. And now in a moment of quiet, it's your chance to offer to God your offertory for the week. If it's cash, you may wish to put it aside in a special place for when we are back together. The Lord's Prayer Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We close this morning's worship with hymn 526 from Singing the Faith, all four verses of Lord of All Hopefulness.
May the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us and all those we love, this day and always. Amen. <laughs>